Friends, welcome to this very special Evensong. Thank you so much for being with us as we install some new members of our chapter and welcome our new chapter for this fiscal year. And as we celebrate with two very special people and make them honorary canons of this cathedral. John Chenefield and Jenny Mars are a very special part of this cathedral community and they have been for many, many years. Jan and I were talking just a few minutes ago that you have to use very few fingers to actually count all the honorary canons there have been at this cathedral. It is an honor, one of the greatest honors we can bestow upon those who have honored our Lord and honored this place and the work of building God's kingdom for so many years. And both John and Jenny are fine, fine examples of that. So thank you for being with us as we pray, as we praise our God first and foremost and give thanks for their ministries. I hope all of you will join us for a reception in the Garth following the service. And the easiest way to get there from here is just to go through the root screen and turn right and go right out the uh, transept doors on the north side and right down to the Garth. I hope you will join us for that and for further celebration. Now let us begin worship. How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. May the gracious favor of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper our handiwork, O oh, prosper the work of our hands. O oh Lord, open thou our lips. And O Lord, shall show forth thy grace. O oh God, make speed to save us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it is was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord,
A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. No one can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The word of the Lord.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O oh Lord, show thy mercy upon us. O oh Lord, save the state. And do thy ministers with righteousness. O Lord, save thy people. Give peace in our time, O Lord. God, make clean our hearts within us. Almighty God, to whose glory we celebrate the dedication of this house of prayer, we give thee thanks for the fellowship of those who have worshipped in this place. And we pray that all who seek thee here may find thee and be filled with thy joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Almighty God, whose blessed apostles Peter and Paul glorified thee by their martyrdom, grant that thy church, instructed by their teaching and example, and knit together in unity by thy spirit, may ever stand firm upon the one foundation, 
which is Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the same Spirit, one God forever and ever. O oh God, who dost manifest in thy servants the signs of thy presence, send forth upon us the spirit of love, that in companionship with one another, thine abounding grace may increase among us through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us bless the Lord. In the name of God, amen. Good afternoon, everyone. What a privilege as it is for me to speak among you, uh, people I so admire and look up to, whose service and ministry uh, take my breath away. I, I'm humbled to be among you. Services like this one remind us that the leadership roles and organizations to which we dedicate ourselves become part of our vocation, our life's work. It, vocation has a rich spiritual overlay to it, particularly appropriate to what we're doing today, but it's true for any endeavor we undertake when it becomes a part of us, when we give something precious of ourselves, something of our talent, or of our skill, our insights, when we give sacrificially of the wealth that has been entrusted to us, when we give our time. In giving, of course, we also receive blessing upon blessing from others engaged in the work with us, and from the work itself, and from the grace of God that finds particular expression in human creativity. For in our work, in our many vocations, we are co-creators with God. A religious leader that I admire once took it upon himself to identify the means, the various means that God uses to seek relationship with us. Think about that as a concept for a moment. God reaching from God's side to pursue us. And um, after interviewing hundreds of people over several years, he came to identify what he called five faith catalysts, ways in which God works to draw us closer to God. And one of them he called personal ministry, personal ministry. Whenever we personally engage in an act of service, and in particular, he said, the ones that stretch us beyond what we think we can do or offer, especially when we've said yes to something and we didn't really understand what the commitment was until later, and we realize that there's this enormous gap between what we thought we said yes to and what we're actually committing to, right? Or perhaps we had a sense from the beginning that it was a really big deal. Um, and we said yes to something we knew we could not accomplish on our own. You see, for it's in that gap between what's been asked of us and who we are and what we have to give that we meet God, because God shows up in those times of despair or doubt when we know we're in over our heads and we're not quite sure what to do, 
or when we're in a collective striving with a group of people and we get to offer our bit alongside everyone else's and we sense that collective energy and power, or when, or when we actually get to feel from the inside what it's like when the Holy Spirit is working through us, accomplishing in us, as St. Paul says, far more than we could ask for or imagine. Our faith can't help but grow as a result of that, right? And even if other people, as they sometimes want to do, want to give us all the credit for what we did, inside we know that it was God, actually, who filled the gap, who showed up in that space between our offering and what was needed and accomplished through us what only God can do. It's amazing. Makes me a believer, by the way, every Sunday morning. Preachers will know what I'm talking about. A bit more about this. When we give ourselves in service, in particular, we, what we give becomes an expression of sacrificial love. And that's the love that God offers us all, revealed most dramatically and completely in the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. And when we participate in that kind of love, no matter the cost to us, something changes inside us. There's this spiritual alchemy that happens. And we realize that we're becoming bigger inside, a bit more like the ones created in the image of God, more of ourselves, yet more aligned with God. Preparing for today and thinking about all of you from the chapter who are completing your terms and those we are welcoming as new chapter members and our two soon-to-be honorary canons that we are uh, celebrating today. Two distinct um, streams of thought entered my mind. And a good rule of preaching is to pick one um, and to keep things simple, but I'm breaking that rule today because you're all really smart people and I'm trusting you can stay with me. And the first has to do with the act of giving itself. And here I'm going to speak specifically about Ginny and John. Um, Because they are uh, seasoned givers. They've been giving all their lives, sacrificially giving of time and talent and wealth. And more than that, And we all know this. They are very quick to invite other people to join them in this over-the-top giving for the good of something else, like the mission and vision of this cathedral as one example. Something worthy of the best we all can give, not just what we have left over after we've tended to ourselves. They they call us to more. And it can be a, a bit uncomfortable, actually, to be in the company of those so adept at giving because it looks so easy to them, right? As if they had all the energy and creativity and wealth and time in the world to give. And meanwhile, the rest of us are like, we never feel like we have enough and how could we possibly give more? But you see, John and Ginny know from experience that when we give beyond what's comfortable, we become more like those trees planted in in water, like Jeremiah said, close to water. We're strong and we're rooted. We become, strangely enough, we become less anxious about lesser things. As hard as it can be at first, when we give beyond ourselves in a big way, we feel lighter somehow, grounded in our values, inspired by our highest aspirations. I don't know how it works. I just know that it does. Yes, the cost is real, it's sacrificial. They know that. All chapter, you you all know this. I'm not speaking just about the two of them. 
But that's precisely the point. There are some things in life that are so important that they deserve gifts that actually cost us something. Because that's where our treasure is, as Jesus said. And that's where our hearts will follow, and they, they grow bigger. And that's, that's what he doesn't say, and that we learn on our own, that our hearts grow bigger with each gift. There's a story that the poet David White tells about himself. Um, he was in conversation with his very best friend, the late, great John O'Donohue, one of the finest poets and priests of Ireland, contemporary Ireland. And in that conversation, he was ruminating aloud about a gift he was thinking of giving his father, a gift of some money. And, and David, who's very... Um, self-revelatory in his poetry, almost never writes about his father, so you, as opposed to his mother, whom he writes about all the time. So you have the sense that his relationship with his father is a bit prickly, perhaps. But his mom has passed on, and he's clearly worried about his father, and he lives alone in England. His dad does. His, uh, David's long since retired, or not retired, but relocated to the Pacific Northwest. And so he's talking about the amount of money he's, he's thinking about giving his, his father. And John asked him, well, you know, how much are you thinking? And David told him, and he said, very good, very good. Now, now go beyond yourself, double it. Okay, said David, I, I will. Very good, said John. Now go beyond yourself again and double that. And David said, man, with a friend like you, a man could go broke. To which John replied, you will never regret this. And sometime after that conversation, John died, a sudden and early death, which makes, of course, those last conversations all the more vivid in, in a person's mind. Um, and he did what John suggested. He went beyond what he thought he could do, and he gave enough money to change his father's life forever and for the better. And John was right. Never once regretted it. And Ginny and John, you know something about that go-beyond-yourself kind of giving. And when they invite the likes of us to join them, it, it may feel impossible at first. And good, they would say. That's good. That's how you're supposed to feel. Now go beyond yourself. Because you won't regret it. You'll never regret it. Now, the second thought I'd like to offer this afternoon in honor of the two of you and, and the new chapter members, and, and all of you, really. This applies to all of you, but particularly to these two. And that's a reminder to all of us about the spiritual courage, the spiritual courage required to go first, to be the one to take the first step in response to a call or a vision or a dream. When we go first, we have no idea if other people are going to join us. When we go first, we don't even know exactly where we're going. Uh, we walk in the beginning more by faith than by sight, as the poet Antonio Machado reminds us that in life, often there is no road. We make the road by walking it. And how many times in the life of this cathedral has John Chenefield or Ginny Mars gone first? first to make the gift, first to chair an important initiative, first to go out on the road, first to say out loud in a meeting, we need to consider this, or we need to do that. And then after taking the first step, they went ahead and took another, and another after that, and they forged a road for us, all of us, by walking. And it is that combination of courage and tenacity that is a wonder to behold, especially in the beginning stages of anything important, because there's absolutely no guarantee that anything will turn out the way you hope. Failure is always a possibility. They know that. We all know that. You, I'm talking about something you all know and have done yourselves. But they know, and we know, that it's better it's better to fail at something big and important than to succeed in a string of mediocrity.
And here's the funny thing. After, in, the, in retrospect, you know, when we are celebrating an accomplishment, it has this air of inevitability about it as if it was preordained all along. And all of us who caught up later, we're all basking in that glow as if it were our, our idea too, right? As if we were one of the first ones. And then people like Ginny and John, they just smile. And they don't require us to be reminded of how highly we reacted negatively in the beginning. They just let that go. Oh. Friends, this is such an important moment in this nation and in the world, arguably for our species. It's a very important moment in the life of this cathedral and all that it represents. And I've been speaking about John and Ginny as if their work is in the past tense, which is, of course, ridiculous because they're right here and continuing among us. But we are, we are each one of us, called in some way. And it may well be that ahead of us, I dare say there will be an invitation to go beyond ourselves, a call to go first or at least second or third, in an adventure of great courage. Maybe we're on that road right now. I dare say we are. But we're here today, and inspired by all of you, we're here, reminded of the value of our life's work and what we choose to say yes to, and to commit ourselves before God and one another uh, that w we, can, we're, we can be counted on, even in those moments when it's hard and scary, uh, to go beyond ourselves and to go first or second, following the one upon whom everything rests and who is, in fact, not only ahead but behind and on our side and within, whose strength we rely on in more ways than we know. May God bless you all and thank you for the privilege of serving among you. Amen. Matthew J. Kloss and James R. Woody, and ask that they may be admitted and installed as members of the chapter of the Cathedral Church of St. Peter and St. Paul. Have they been duly elected to this ministry and instructed in their governance and fiduciary responsibilities? My friends, be diligent, so to take your part in the government of this place, that here the word of God may be faithfully preached and the sacraments duly administered in all things, so uphold the honor and dignity of this great cathedral church, the offering of its worship, and the furthering of its mission. Will you, attending to the guidance of the Holy Spirit, Commit yourself to this trust and responsibility. Will you, in all your deliberations, conform to the bylaws of this cathedral, the Protestant Episcopal Cathedral Foundation, and the canons of the Diocese of Washington and the Episcopal Church? Speaking now to the current members of the, of the cathedral chapter, will you enthusiastically receive and support these new members? And with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, continue in ministry with them. Dear people of God, all of us now, dear people of God, 
Will you, who witness this new ministry, this new beginning, support and uphold this ministry? We will, with God's help. In the name of God, I, Mary Ann Edgar Buddy, Bishop of Washington, do hereby induct and install you as members of the chapter of the Church of St. Peter and St. Paul, with all rights and dignities and opportunities for service, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, the foundation, the foundation of all wisdom, the source of all courage. Enlighten with your grace the members of the chapter of the Cathedral Church of St. Peter and St. Paul, and so guide their counsels, that in all things they may seek your glory and promote the mission of your church through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As Dean of this Cathedral, I now invite you to take your stalls, symbolic of your office and responsibilities. You guys know where you're going? Take these stalls that you may be set forth, that you may set forth the glory of God by your authority and example, and make it your chief concern to build up the body of Christ in this cathedral church. Fill our hearts, O oh God, with the love that inspired Peter and make us bold with the truth revealed to Paul. May the ministry of this cathedral church entrusted to us in Christ's name gather all people into God's love and serve the truth that makes all people free. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Friends, will you join me in welcoming the newest members of the Cathedral Chapter? We give thanks for Lewis Baylor, Patrick Gross, Virginia Mars, and Hollis McLaughlin, who are concluding their terms as members of the chapter. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the work and witness of your servants who have enriched this community through their service. By your Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and guide them as they find new ministries that call forth the continued use of their gifts. May they always serve the one who is the way and the truth and the life, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We give thanks this day for the life, witness, and ministry of Margaret Richardson, whom we know as Peggy, for her generous spirit and dedicated service to this cathedral as a member of the chapter. Let us pray. O 
Mighty God, we remember your servant Peggy, who has gone before us with the sign of faith and now rests in peace. According to your promises, grant her and to all who rest from their labors refreshment, light, and peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Please stand. Bishop Mary Ann, it is also our purpose to install two honorary lay canons of this cathedral church. Let the presentations be made. I present to you John Hale Shenefield and Virginia Cretella Mars, lay persons in the Church of God, who have been chosen to serve as honorary canons of the Cathedral Church of St. Peter and St. Paul. I believe that they have demonstrated competence and faithfulness and have been prayerfully and lawfully selected. John, you have been chosen to serve as honorary canon in this cathedral church. As such, you will have the responsibility and privilege of the stewardship of this great institution, the upholding of its dignity and honor, the offering of its worship and the furtherance of its mission. Do you, in the presence of this congregation, commit yourself to this new trust? Ginny, you have been chosen to serve as an honorary canon of this cathedral church. As such, you will have the responsibility and privileges of stewarding this great institution, the upholding of its dignity and honor, the offering of its worship, and the furthering of its mission. Do you, in the presence of this congregation, commit yourself to this new trust? Dear people of God, will all of you who witness this new beginning support and uphold this ministry? We will, with God's help. Receive the Holy Scriptures and this prayer book. Be ever mindful in all your counsel to promote the well-being and the mission of Christ Church. Receive these medals in recognition of your exceptional leadership and as a sign of the collegiality with your fellow canons. Let these symbols be signs of the ministry which you share with me, the dean, and with the canons of this cathedral church. I, Mary Ann Edgar Buddy, Bishop of the Diocese of Washington, do hereby induct you, John and Virginia, duly and lawfully elected as honorary canons of the Cathedral Church of St. Peter and St. Paul, with all rights, duties, and privileges, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As Dean of this Cathedral, I now invite you to take the stall symbolic of your office. Almighty and 
eternal God, so draw my heart to you, so guide my mind, so fill my imagination, so control my will, that I may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated to you, and that you use me, I pray, as you will, and always to your glory and the welfare of your people, through Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join in congratulating and celebrating our newest honor. My brothers and sisters, we are the body of Christ. Let us endeavor to keep the unity of spirit in the bonds of peace. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us pray. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably upon your whole church that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know the things which were cast down are being raised up and things which had grown old are being made new, and then all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Remember that the Holy Spirit is at work in you accomplishing far more than you can ask for or imagine. Now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.